Hello, dragons. My name is Michael Pritchard, and I've invented the Anyway Spray. And I'd like to offer you 5% in the value of my company in exchange for an investment of £125,000. Now, I'm sure we're all familiar with these sprays. They're in the home everywhere. But they suffer from two really annoying problems. The first is they generally only work in one direction. When you change that direction, they stop working. So <laughs> when you're trying to clean under the tap or you're trying to clean the shower or get those really annoying green fly stuck under the leaf, you can't get them. The other thing they suffer from is it's really difficult to get the last little bit from the spray. Now, the reason why they have these problems is because they use a dip tube. My invention is really simple. You take one of these and you replace it with one of these, an anyway tube. And now, you have a spray that will work in any way. The other great thing about anyway spray, that problem of removing the last bit, it will remove every last drop. Now, they work in aerosols too, but there's a third, more important problem with aerosols. They use VOCs, which are harmful to the environment. The technology within Anyway Spray allows the manufacturers, in most cases, to substitute those VOCs for a harmless gas, such as compressed air, which is free. Now, the market size for this little lot here is about 100 billion units a year worldwide. And my proposition is a simple one. We take a 1p royalty. Every time we put one of these into one of these or one of these. Thank you very much for listening and I'd be very pleased to take any questions that you have. There's one to play with. A very confident Michael Pritchard hopes he's done enough to tempt the dragons to invest £125,000 for just 5% of his new invention, a multi-directional household spray. But his pitch has left Theo Pafitis perplexed. Michael, I'm Theo. Hello, Theo. How does it work? OK, um, it's really quite simple. A dip tube has got one hole in it, and an anyway tube has got about a billion. And the anyway tube prefers liquids to gases. So liquids go through, gases don't. OK. Now, you wanted £125,000, a lot of money, for 5%. Um, so I assume you've got full patents and all this. Patents have been applied for. We have 24 applications currently out there covering about 48 countries. When did you apply? 2007. 2000. Any, any comeback? Any feedback? We've got no indication yet of whether they're likely to say yay or nay, but I've got some pretty good patent attorneys. We've spent a lot of time and money to date. How much um, have you spent? Approximately £100,000 so far on the patents. It's a sure-footed start from Michael, but his answers have rung alarm bells for Peter Jones. Michael and Peter, hello. Hello, Peter. Um, at the start, I felt like you were actually trying to sell me a fantastic plot of land that's got full planning permission for all the house, but it now turns out that you're trying to sell me land worth two and a half million pounds without planning permission. I mean, the valuation was outrageous. Well... What was your criteria for assessment of that? Uh, look at the market. There's 100 billion units. Look at the unmet needs of the consumer. Ever since these were invented over a century ago, they've suffered from these problems. And we all, as consumers, have had to put up with them. Michael, I completely get the issue. I cannot tell you how many times I've ended up with blinking green fly killer dribbling down my arm because it's not coming out of the spray, it's coming out of the joint. And I thought, whippy, fantastic. But you don't have a patent. 
Not yet, that, because that's just how these things go. But if I'd waited till I get a patent, it might you be several years. You spent £100,000 and yep. you haven't got a patent. That's correct, yes. Drug companies can get, take up to seven, eight years before they get a patent granted. I absolutely but understand they... how the patent system works. Sure, yeah. Michael's confidence takes a knock as the dragons expose the flaws in his business. Duncan Bannatyne is next to interrogate the inventor. I think you're exaggerating the problem a little bit. But at the end of the day, this product is worth nothing unless the people who manufacture those bottles and those sprays buy it from you or license it from you. Uh, we've approached five companies and um, anyway tubes have already gone out and they're in test. It's going to take a long time. There are, they are large organisations and my expect we've been talking for nine months now. What extra will it add to the cost of the aerosol can to them? It's a penny more, because we want a penny from the licence. Do you, do you supply this tube in a continuous tube? Some want it on the rolls, and others want them in, in bits. So you have no problem doing that? No. Well, it seems that at the end, it seems to be closed at the end, so that's what I can't understand. That's right. Um, when, you, when you cut it, you would also use an ultrasonic weld. That must have a cost. Um, in terms of capital expenditure, maybe 20 grand. On a production I, line. I asked you about the cost, the extra cost of the manufacturer for your tube instead of that tube. You never mentioned that. I haven't gone. Well, they you haven't... Know, for, for me, that's where the problem is because it's more difficult for them, it's time consuming, and there has to be a penny more. What's the point? So, for that reason, I'm out. It's a blow for Michael as he loses his first dragon. And James Kahn is struggling with the whole concept. I'm still stuck okay. on, is the manufacturer's problem all the technicalities that you're debating? Yeah. Or does the problem not really exist? Well, um, I haven't just asked my mum, but I have done quite a bit of uh, testing in supermarkets, asking people and doing some surreptitious demonstrating what they think. and. A pound to a penny every time they come back and say, yeah, that's really annoying. But that, to me, is the $64 million question, because if the consumer or the manufacturer believe that it's caused a real problem in the market, they do something about it, and would it take nine months to do that? I'm not sure. So if we can't really establish a genuine need, mm. I can't invest. Um, so I'm out. Michael, let me, let, let me tell you where I am. I absolutely get the need for this. The, the, the biggest issue for me is the risk in this business. I, I invest taking calculated risks. I don't invest taking wild gambles. And what you're presenting here today is a complete wild gamble. So I'm afraid I'm out. Two more dragons walk away from the deal and Michael's chances of investment now rest only with Peter Jones and Theo Pafitis. It's not going to be really a choice for a manufacturer to want to introduce because it will increase the cost upwards and I think the biggest issue... They're reducing their costs in, in the aerosols significantly. Well, I don't know because it is annoying. Have to put VOCs in which costs probably between 4 and 6p in the can. So we could take that out too. Yeah, but when we dispose of those cans, which is the, I, I'm not even. There's a big I wouldn't cost be surprised. Of disposal, actually, that's a very good question. There's a big cost of disposal with these. Um, councils will only take them if they're empty, and still they have to go through a very rigid disposal program because they they've got flammable gases, and because it wouldn't have the flammable gases on there. They'd just be able to dispose of them and recycle them without going through the very costly and expensive process of getting rid of the propane and butane. At the point of losing a fourth dragon, a remarkably calm Michael may just have rescued his pitch. But is Peter Jones willing to throw him the £125,000 lifeline he badly needs? I hear what you say on the, on the aerosols. I think that that's probably its biggest, your biggest selling point. I think that that is a potentially commercial, viable product. But because you are a business with no planning permission on a nice piece of green belt at the moment, 
The D risk is that I'm going to want more money for my buck initially. So I'm going to offer you half the money, £62,500, but I want 20% of the patent with you on that. OK, thank you. It's a dramatic turnaround. But strict rules of the den state that an entrepreneur must get an offer of the full amount or they walk away with nothing. And there's just one dragon left in. You're asking us to take an absolute out-and-out -out punt. That one, the patents will be granted. Sure. And secondly, the bit I'm uncomfortable about is why the manufacturers out there haven't taken your arm off. It's not normal. The difference is, if you get on the phone to the chief executive Procter & Gamble, he's going to take your call. He's not going to take mine. That's why your experience is things work a little bit quicker than mine. I would love to give you a chance. Really would. I'm going to make you an offer. I will match Peter's offer. But I too will want 20%. The fledgling nature of Michael's invention looks like costing him a much larger proportion of his company than he initially wanted to give away. Will he now be able to negotiate down from the offer that's on the table? How about I chuck something back at you? How about I say, look, if you don't make your money back after three years, you want to look at pulling your money back out of three years, you then might want to look at an exit strategy, how you can then leverage that. Um, I'll give you your money back. I, I'm, I'll tell you where I'm willing to go, and it's whether Theo... I'm willing to make the offer stand at 62,000 for 20% of the business. And if after three years, my 62,500 has been repaid, I'm willing to give you an additional 5% of my equity back. So I will end up with 15% of the company holdings. OK, I understand. I think that's generous, but fair. Um, I'd run with that. I can't go to the 30%. I don't think it's realistic. Um, I think if we moved it to 7.5% each, that's realistic because you're going to get money back and you're going to get the opportunity to make a massive leverage on your money. Possibility. Of know, course. It's not guaranteed. No business is guaranteed. I'm going to cut this short because the minimum I will look at is 10%. Now, I don't know what Peter feels about that. Am I right, Theo? You've offered 62,500 for 10% with a money back guarantee. Yep. OK, I, I will accept that. I'll match Theo's offer as well. So 62,500 for 10%. Got a deal. Well done. Michael's done it. He's given away 20% of his company, but he walks away with the cash and contacts of two influential Dragon investors.